Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. And once again, it's Friday, I've got my apron on, so let's get started with uh, some more work here on the modules. Today, I want to go about laying the green foam on top of the modules, and we'll get started with actually transferring a track plan to the modules themselves. So stick around for the video. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with uh, gluing the green foam down onto the plywood uh, top of the module. And I'll show you how I go about doing that. And let's take a, a, a look also at, at a couple of other things uh, as we do that. Now, what I used for this is something called Liquid Nails for Projects. And it is a uh, different formulation. They have a number of different formulations. You don't want any of the ones that are, are aggressive and are going to eat through your foam itself. And there are types that will do that. So you want to make sure that whatever you use is compatible with foam. Okay, and the liquid nail saw projects uh, will do that. It dries quickly and it has a good strong grip right away. So uh, it doesn't take a lot to hold it in place while it is initially setting up. Um, after that, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and take a look at transferring uh, the track plan to the uh, uh, foam uh, uh, sub base and get started with, uh, with that. So what I want to do right now though is go ahead and we'll uh, uh, start the process of gluing this down. What I have done already is I've taken the, the sheet of foam and I've cut it you know, so that it fits properly and squarely on the top of the plywood and the, uh, uh, and the baseboard. So now what I need to do, and make sure it's, it's critical that it be flush up front along the front edge and also of course here in the center where the two pieces join. You want to make sure those are square. It's not as important that this edge back here or the, along the rear are all that perfect because I'm going to be installing a piece of uh, quarter or eighth inch tempered hardboard that's going to wrap around and form a continuous backdrop at least for the first half of the module and continue with a second piece around the other side. And that is going to uh, cover any uh, gaps that you might have along the sides and on the rear. And we'll be applying uh, various scenery materials over this also. So any gaps that you have on the ends and on the rear are going to be covered by foam and scenery and various other things that are just, you know, going to hide the problems. So you want to make sure that the front is square and that the middle sections where the two pieces join are going to be square as well. Also, make sure that you've leveled your module so that one end is not up at a slight angle or vice versa. You want to get it leveled out and that's where those leveling uh, feet come in very handy. And uh, I went ahead and did that uh, a few minutes ago and got it all leveled out. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take this piece of foam off and I'm going to set it down right over here out of the way. And let's go ahead. Like I said, I use this liquid nails for project uh, construction adhesive and these little caps that you can buy uh, in the putty, in the same aisles where you buy the uh, uh, the uh, tubes of liquid nails are great. They're made for capping these. I've had these things sit for uh, a couple of months and take that cap off and they're still fresh as the day I opened them. Uh, otherwise, if you tried to use the old nail trick or a piece of tape, something like that, it inevitably dries out and uh, you have to throw the tube away. But this, these things work great. Let me point that out. Okay, let me set this down out of the way. Okay, uh, what I want to do is I've already cut this at an angle and it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is apply a bead of adhesive uh, here on the uh, on the top of the bench work. And then I'm going to spread that out uh, using one of these disposable putty knives, um, which I don't throw them away. I just clean them up after every use. But uh, these things work great. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay. 
Okay, let me cap this so it's taken care of. And then I would just run a whole bunch of lines, you know, about six inches apart, uh, all across the uh, baseboard and the length of it. And so now what I'm going to do is just spread it out in a, you know, in a fairly thick or uh, wide line so that we've got good coverage all the way across and we'll have good adhesion for the foam once we do apply it. Okay, I'm going to need to add a few more lines here to fill in some gaps. Okay, that's pretty well got that smeared on real good. So let's go ahead and add the piece of foam. Just checking how they made up there and it's a, a good match, good and square. So what I'm going to do now is I'll go ahead and do the other end and uh, then as soon as this dries in a few hours I'll come back and finish filming the rest of the video on how we're going to go about transferring the track plan here to the layout. Okay, everything has had time to set up so it's been about an hour now. And what I want to do is uh, I'm going to pull the uh, weights off. Uh, one of the things that I did after I uh, turned off the camera is I put a couple of boards here running eight foot long and I put some jugs of water uh, on the boards and that kind of helped to press everything down and hold it in place while the glue set up. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these off now but you know it's a great way to uh, uh, to press these into place and keep them from shifting uh, and also it helps just flatten the foam a bit more too but because you want to get a good flat uh, contact between the foam and that uh, adhesive so I'm going to go ahead turn the camera off for a minute and get all this stuff off okay now one thing I do want to point out uh, just in case there was any glue that uh, squished out here between the two boards uh, I'm going to run a, uh, a knife blade down between the between the uh, two sections just to make sure that we don't have anything that has uh, gotten glued together here. And that's all there is to that. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about how I'm going to go about transferring a track plan onto this green foam. Okay, uh, because I have this track plan set up so that it runs straight through, I can use this one section of track that goes continually through the whole diagram as the base. So I've already uh, gone into my CAD program and measured the exact distance from the back edge to that first track and uh, at both ends anyway of the module. 
And now what I'm going to do is transfer those measurements onto the top of the foam. Then I'm going to take a um, chalk line. And this is uh, something that builders use all the time. And I'm going to lay out a chalk line on the top of the foam on those two measurements. And then we're going to pop a line so that we get a line all the way through the board or through the baseboard or through the, uh, through the, the, the layout. And then we'll be able to use that one piece to measure off of because all of the other treks are, are about two inches uh, on center from that one line. And then we will be able to adjust the, uh, the turnouts and everything else as we go along. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is pop a line uh, using this chalk line. Okay, I went ahead and put a couple of pins in and strung out the chalk line. So all I have to do now is lift up the chalk line and let it snap back down. And it's going to transfer a straight line the full length of the module. And that's all there is to it. Okay, I've got my uh, four foot long ruler here and I'm going to go ahead and start marking that. And, you know, you guys might be looking at the back of my head a little bit, but let's go ahead and get it done. Okay, that should give me a pretty solid uh, straight line through here that we'll be able to measure off of. Now that I've got the uh, solid line on here marked in with a black magic marker or Sharpie, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start measuring off for the other tracks here that are at uh, two inches roughly. Uh, this section down here is at three and a half inches and up here these come in at about uh, 2.9 inches up off of the main track. So it's going to be simply a matter of measuring uh, off, setting a couple of lines, and then drawing a straight line using my ruler or my uh, longer ruler in order to transfer the entire track plan to the top here of the baseboard. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this for a while, and I'll come back at the end and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've got the uh, track plan transferred now. It was much easier than I thought it was going to be because, as it turns out, this was exactly two inches wide, as was my big blue ruler that I've been using a lot. So all I had to do was basically lay this against the original line, draw a mark with my uh, magic marker, and move it, and then do another line, and move it down, and do another line. So the track went really, really quickly. And then uh, I've added my turnouts, like so, on the, uh, on the diagram to be able to transfer the locations of those and get a feeling for how it all goes together. Um, and let me point out that for this I'm going to be using Pico uh, Electrofrogs. And, um, you know, basically there's very little difference between the British version and the US version electrically and the way they operate and the rails. Um, uh, the British version is code 75, the American is code 83. The ties are narrower, narrower on the US version than the British version. You know, and that's about it. They look a little bit different, but otherwise it's the same as far as wiring them and laying the track and, and the whole nine yards. So this is going to be a great uh, way of showing you guys uh, how to use uh, electrofrogs, how to wire them, how to install them, how to uh, you know provide uh, switching power to the frogs, and basically how to install electrofrog turnouts. Okay, now at this point what I'm going to do is shift over here and I'm going to take the camera off the stand. So I'm just going to have to 
handhold the camera and I'm going to do a, a basically a flyover and give you a view of the track plan as it is on the layout and uh, you can see what it looks like with the uh, turnouts in place and uh, everything marked. Okay so here we are on the west end of the layout on the far left and you can see we've got the cattle pen right down here at the bottom, the good shed here, the crossover as you come in from the from the left and run straight through. We've got our station right up here and uh, there will be a station platform there so that uh, you know trains can come in run straight through on this main line at the uh, at the station here and uh, then this will be the uh, connection for the loop so that trains can uh, come in and run around uh, passenger trains that are, are, are sitting at the station itself. Okay if we look uh, even further here I'm going to zoom out a little bit more and you can see this is the goods yard that's all laid out per the diagram and we have all the turnouts in place uh, and I'm just going to move on down here and you can see we're moving up the ladder uh, through the goods yard. I have not uh, extended the diagram out to the uh, gas works yet. That's something I'll do by hand later on because I want to put that nice curve in there. Uh, and um, make it a more free-flowing kind of design as far as going out to the gas works. Okay, as we move on down here, I've uh, got a, uh, the signal box in position. Now this is the uh, signal tower as it is from uh, on my Piedmont Southern layout at Charlottesville. And basically a signal box served pretty much the same purpose then as an interlocking tower. Inside of the office here up in the uh, upper floor, you would have all of those long uh, levers that control all of the switches within the uh, station area and for a distance on either side of, of the station area. So that the signalman in there could throw those switches. Not only did he control the switches, he controlled all of the signals. And we haven't even started talking about signals yet. And that can get pretty complicated, let me tell you. Okay, as we move on down then we have the crossover so that trains coming in from the east can cross over to the loop and proceed leftbound uh, past the station area and uh, enter the goods yard if they need to go there or continue on down and exit out to the west uh, by running around the station. Um, there's also of course that small passenger platform located on this side as well. And then of course trains can then exit out to the, uh, to the east. And right here we have this small uh, extension of track uh, that's uh, commonly called a head shunt in England. And uh, basically it, it allowed uh, the locomotives to basically use that extended area when they were moving cars in and out of the goods yard. Okay, so that's the overall look of it. I'm going to zoom up, uh, fly up a little bit higher and give you a better view of it. So we've got all of the turnouts in place there, all laid out. Of course, this will run up to the engine shed, and this one over here will go on up to the dock uh, per the diagram. So those are all laid in place, and we'll get into wiring all this, and, and I'll show you all the modifications that I do make to these uh, Pico Electrofrog turnouts uh, as we go on through the process of laying the track and then wiring everything in. So. That's one last look at it, and uh, like I said, you know, it's, it's going to be a fun layout to put together, and I, hopefully it's going to be one, a fun one to operate. So stick with me on this one. Well, that's pretty much a wrap for this week. Um, on Monday, we're going to uh, take a look at KD couplers and how to use KD couplers. The reason why I want to go ahead and, and go ahead and go over KD couplers and their use right now is because I'm going to use under-the-track magnets on this layout in order to be able to uncouple and use delayed uncoupling the whole nine yards uh, based on the you know the design that KD originally came up with for these and uh, it, it adds a lot of interest to uh, switching uh, to be able to do that so we're going to have to figure out in advance where to install the under the track magnets and I'll also and, and I'll also be showing you other ways of working with KDs because I've got some little portable magnets, I've got some magnets that you can put on the track, and I've got some uh, coupler picks that uh, you can use for uncoupling uh, KDs. So I want to go over all of that on Monday and uh, give you an idea of how 
uh, it all goes together. And then on uh, next Friday, uh, we'll go ahead and start installing roadbed and uh, installing the um, the Bachman version of the under the track magnets. I use those instead of the KDs, but you know, they're basically the same. So I hope you have a great weekend and be safe. And we'll see you here again on Monday with a look at KD couplers. Bye now.